This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. Whether you have less or not, because, like, you know, we as humans, we kind of get that, oh, yeah, that little creepy crawly feeling when we feel like we're getting itchy. Oh, totally. Mm. Tonight, we're following up on a story we first brought you last night about head lice in schools. We show you what the treatment looks like if someone in your family catches the little critters. Health Watch Tops Channel 2 News at 530. It like makes you itch just thinking about it, doesn't it? Oh, right? I think I... Got. Stop it. <laughs> 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 the district policy in Washington, <laughs> oh, in Washington County allows for a student with a confirmed case of head lice to return mm -hmm. to class. Good evening. I'm Kristen Remington. And I'm Landon Miller. Thank you for, for staying here. I think you got it. The district's policy is actually based on recommendations from the Centers for Disease Control. Zach Mooney is live here in the studio with the details on that. And Zach, that actually seems like it may hurt the kids. Well, Landon, it doesn't really. The lice are kind of harmless, even though they are icky. Now, the American Academy of Pediatrics argues that kids missing class actually hurts the students, teachers, and the entire community more than the lice themselves. But while the lice may be fairly harmless, they're still a major, major hassle. A lot of people say, well, there's lice around in the schools, in my kid's play group, or wh what have you, and what's the worst thing that could happen? And John It's not the lice themselves that itch, but rather their saliva on your scalp as they feast on your blood. And it sounds scary, but the biggest health risk is simple irritation. You might scratch it a lot, you might break the skin, and you might introduce something else, but the lice itself generally doesn't cause any bad outcomes to occur. Treatment involves killing the living bugs, usually with a shampoo or cream, then getting rid of the next generation by combing out all the eggs, known as nits, making sure to get the fine teeth as close to the scalp as you can. The shampoo may take two treatments about a week apart, and you should check for nits each day for a couple weeks. It has kind of glued them to your hair, and so you really have to be a good job doing it systematically, layer by layer, uh, side by side, all the way across the head for, for the entire family. Yes, he said the entire family. Check everyone in your home to make sure the bugs haven't spread to other people. The other preventative things we can do is wash all the things that you can wash in hot water. If it doesn't fit in the washing machine, give it a good vacuum. Put any other items you're concerned about into trash bags for a few days to starve out any survivors. Here's the thing. Lice need human blood to survive, so they need to feed on the order of a couple times a day, and they can't live for usually longer than one to two days uh, without human blood at all. And you can get the shampoo to treat lice at most pharmacies or grocery stores. There's also a prescription strength shampoo available, but Dr. Chai says to be cautious using that one with pregnant women or very small children. Covering Health Watch live in the studio, Zach Mooney, Channel 2 News. Yeah, I seriously shellac my girls' hair with gel, with hairspray. They wear helmets to school. I'm not joking. Shellac? I have those kids, the shellac head kids. <laughs>